Okay, now, let's look at this. This has to do with a comp compounding of interest and things of that form. We're going to start with simple interest, and then we're going to start talking about the compounding. Okay, how do you compound? And compound is basically when you take your amount, your balance, you multiply times your interest, and basically instead of it being a whole amount, the whole beginning, the whole year, basically they cut it up into chunks, and they compound it, calculating it on these one, all these chunks, okay? So let's look at this right here. Our first step is simple interest. So simple interest is just principal times the rate times the time. That's the first thing. So your principal is basically the, I mean your interest is basically your principal times your rate times your time, okay? I is basically the interest earned, P is basically the original interest, I mean the original principal, R is the annual interest rate, and T is the number, the time that it takes. So now let's look at this one right here. Okay, if we had Trevor investing $1,000 in an account that earns simple interest at an annual rate of 5%, how much interest does Trevor earn if he leaves the money alone for one year? Find the accumulated balance in his account. Now, the word A, the letter A, will stand for the accumulated amount, okay? But the first thing we have to do is find the interest. So we're going to take the principal of 1,000, multiply times the rate, which is 0 0.05, times the time, which is going to be one year. And we get that the interest itself is going to be $50. Now, we add that to the principal to give us the amount, the total amount, the accumulated amount, which we call A. Okay, so now our next step is going to be to do it for several times. So what if he left it alone for two years instead of one year? See, it doesn't earn anything. Uh, it earns only 5% only each time. So on the first one, uh, you have 1,000 times your interest rate of 0 0.05 times 2, which gives you $100. So it's 50 plus 50. See, there is not... It's not, uh, you don't have a curve, you don't have an exponential or anything of that form. It's just $50 every time. So now, if for, three, for two years, it's going to be $1,100. So his money grew only to $100. Now, by the way, that's a pretty nice interest rate in, in nowadays because 5%, I don't know where anybody you could get 5%. Which is kind of sad, but uh, basically that's the reality of our country right now. But now let's look at the next thing we have. Trevor invests a thousand dollars in an account that earns simple interest at an annual rate of five percent per year. How much earned interest does Trevor earn if he leaves the money alone for three years? So what's changing here is your time. Okay, your rate is the same, your principal is the same. What's different is your time. So now we're just going to uh, plug in for three and we get $150. And every, again, like I said, every time you're accruing $50. You're not doing more than 50 each time. So any questions on that? And then this is the accumulated amount. This is the principal, 1,000 plus 150, which gives you 1,150. So no matter how long the money stays in the account, it only earns $50 a year, okay, in interest. So the better thing is what we call compound interest, okay? And the better thing is what we call compound interest, which is basically interest is paid both on the original principal and on all interest that has been added to the original principal. So you have to set a term, okay? Like, for example, they'll say compound it quarterly, or compound it monthly, or compound it yearly, okay? So on this one, let's look at this. Trevor invests $1,000 in an account that earns interest rate at 5%. Compound it annually now. How much interest does Trevor earn if he leaves the money alone for one year? Well, it's going to be the same. Okay, it's going to be 1050 just like you had before. 
Now we're going to take that 1050, okay, and now we're going to multiply that by 0.05 and add it, okay? So we're going to have 1050 times 0.05, see the balance has changed, it's no longer 1000, it's now point, uh, 1050. So now for the next year it's going to be 5250. So we're going to add 5250 for the second year. You have 1,050 plus 5,250. So now you have 1,102.5. Now that was the second year. Now the third year, again, we're going to do the same thing, but we're not going to start at 1050 or 1,000. We're going to start at 1,102. See, your balance increases. So for 1,102, multiply that by 0.05 for the third year, and you get 55.13. You're going to add that to your accumulated amount of 1,102.5. So now this becomes your accumulated amount on here. Okay, so are there any questions on that? Now, before I go ahead and show you on the calculator how to do this, because the calculator has a really, really neat way of doing it, let me show you by hand by using the formula, okay? So before I do that, Let's look at this example right here. And uh, let me show you where it is on the calculator and then I'll show you that. But let's look at this. On the calculator, depends on what calculator you have, okay? So, but if you have the TI-83, you're gonna go to, um, okay, there it is. You're going to go to yellow and finance right there. See this? Yellow and finance. And then use a TVM solver. That's what you're going to be using. That's where you have to be. Now, if you have one of the fancier ones, okay, it's a little bit, it's basically the same thing, it's just in a different position. You're going to go to second. Let me turn it on first. Okay, there we go. You're gonna go to second and apps. I'm sorry. Uh, I'm sorry, it's just apps. So just apps. You can't see that, can you? Okay, so you're gonna go to apps. And it's the very first one, application. And there you have your TVM solver. Okay, so there's two of them. There's two different types of calculator. Which one do you have? Okay, what does it look like? Can you show it? Okay, good. So you're on this one, okay? So on this one, just go hit apps. And there should be one that says finance and press enter on there. And you're going to be using the first one, the TVM solver. Okay, that's the one that you use. Okay, now, there's some buttons that you're going to have to know. Do you see this right here, solve? Do you see how it's in green? So when we're ready to solve, you hit the green button and the enter, which is the solve, where it says solve. Okay? So any questions on that? Okay, so let's look at the first one. Now, what I would like to do is tell you what the formulas are first. Okay? Okay, so let's look at the first example. And, okay, so let's look at the first example right here. Okay, so we have this one right here. Now, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna do something real quickly, okay, because I'm gonna do it by hand here.
Okay. So let's look at this one right here. Now, you have, what you want to do, there's two ways of doing this. You can use the calculators. It's probably better the better way of doing it, using the calculator. But I just wanted to show you what kind of formula you're going to use. Now, the formula that you have is this. A is the amount accumulated, okay? P is your principal. You multiply times this 1 plus the APR, which is your interest rate, okay? And it's to the number of years that you have, okay? That's the formula that you're going to have. So now what you do is you plug them in. Okay, so your principal in this case was $1,000. One plus the APR, the APR was 0.06. And then you have five years, okay? And it's annual compounding, so you have to multiply that. That should be multiplied by N, and that's just gonna be times one. And you can't see that, can you? Sorry. Okay, so basically that's what you're doing. That's the formula that you're going to be using. So now we have to do is just calculate it. Okay? So now when we calculate it, we're going to have, we're going to take 1,000, 1,000 times 1 plus 0.06 to the fifth power. And it's going to give you 1,338.22. Or I'm sorry, 0.23. So your future value, this is what we call it, future value is 1,338.23. Uh, now, one way of doing it by the TVM solver is this way. Okay, we can do the same thing by using the calculator. Again, you go to um, apps, you go to finance, and you use the TVM solver right there. Now, the first one, what you're going to do is you're going to take the number of years that you're going to be accumulating it times the number of times you're going to be compounding it. It says it's going to be compounded annually, so it's basically one. So basically, it's going to be 5 times 1, which is going to give you 5. <coughs> now you're going to put the interest rate. Now you're not going to put 0.06. You're just going to put the interest rate. So your interest rate was 6%. So you're going to put oops, 6%, just like that. Okay, so now you're going to find the present value. That's the money now. That's the money the, the, that you have right now. Okay, and we're going to make it a negative. And the only reason we make it a negative is because of the calculator functions. Okay, it has to have a negative and a positive in order to be able to calculate what it needs to calculate. But one thing you can think about it is this way. Okay, you're putting that money in the bank. You don't have it anymore. The bank has it. So for you, it's negative so far. Until you get it back, it's negative. Okay, so it's negative and it's going to be what? Negative 1,000? Is that how much we had, the balance? Yes. Okay, now, payments you're going to ignore right now, and future value, we're just going to leave it like that. Okay, so we're going to have future value, and we're going to leave it blank, but you can't, you have to blank it out at the end. Okay, you can't blank it out while you're, you're moving around, okay, because the calculator just won't let you, okay? Like, for example, if I just didn't put anything here, and it's not going to let me. Okay, it's not going to let me move. It wants something there. Okay, so we move it down. Now that's going to be the number of compounding and the years. Okay, so in this case, what we have is one year. We're compounding one year. And these two should always be the same. Okay, now what we want to do is move this until we go to our future value. Our future value is what is the money that we're going to have in the future, you know? And in this case, it's going to be when? In five years. When we put this money down in the bank, then what is it going to be in five years? What are we going to get back in five years? 
okay? So basically what I put, I put my cursor for the future value because that's what I'm trying to solve. Now what I'm, my next step is going to be, I'm going to move this so that you can see the whole screen here. You're going to go ahead and go to yeah, uh, green and the solve, okay? So you're going to go green and solve. <coughs> Did you see that? Green and solve, or green and enter. Now, I'm going to move it up so you can see that number. That is your amount. That's your answer. $1,338.23. There it is. Okay. So that's what you're going to have. $1,338.23. And that's how you get the number. Okay, so are there any questions on that? Let's look at the next one. Okay, so when investing or depositing money into an account, you percent value is cash outflow. Okay, so that, that's what I was telling you before. That, that's how you can picture it. You don't have money in your pocket now. You put it in the bank. So you don't have that money. So you can consider it a negative. Okay. Now, payments, you're not doing payments yet, so we have it at zero. So let's look at this one right here. Let's look at this one right here. Now again, I could just do this on the equation, okay? So again, what we have is, let's go ahead and put what we have here. APR is equal to 8.5%. Okay, now my number of years is going to be T is equal to 30, and my compounding is going to be annually. So basically what I have there is if I put me equa the equation, the equation is going to be the number of compounding times the number of years, and you're going to have this formula. You have $40,000 okay times one plus your interest rate now again you have to make that into a decimal if you're going to do it by hand that's one point that's 0 0.085 then you raise that to the 30th times one so that's going to be 30 and then you calculate that okay okay so now i have this I take 40,000 multiplied by 1.085. I really can't see very well here. Okay, 1.085. Okay, to the 30th power. It's 30, okay. So what I get right there when I put it into my formula is 46,000. Let me see here. Oh, I'm sorry, no. It's 462,330.06, or 07, I guess you could say 07 right there. And that's going to be your answer. Now, again, you can do this on the calculator. Okay, look at this right here. Now, I'm going to put online a TVM solver worksheet, so that way you can have it for homeworks and stuff like that, for tests. Okay, you can put them on the test. And basically, it's just these lists right there. You can just put down what you need. So, for example, here, what I could have done, instead of having to do the formula, I could have just said, okay, so my N, what is my N? My N is going to be 30. Okay, so my N is 30, and I'm going to compound it annually. So it's going to be times 1. My percent, that's my APR, so that's going to be, in this case, 8.5, so I could put 8.5. My present value is the money I have right now. I put in $40,000, so my numbers are $40,000. And again, I put negative because now I don't have $40,000 in my pocket. The bank has the $40,000, so I'm negative $40,000. Again, that's just a way of thinking of it. What's happening here is the calculator needs <coughs> a change in signs in order to do the function. Okay? That's really why it's happening. 
But basically, we can think about it that way. We're not doing any payments, so we're just going to leave that as zero. Okay? <coughs> not yet. Now, again, before you do anything, you have to put zero, but then you're going to blank it out and solve. But this is what you're going to solve, because that's what you need. You need to solve for future value. Now, this is going to be your number of um, compounding. And we're just compounding annually, so we have that. We're just compounding annually. So it's just one. So now we can go ahead and enter these in the calculator. Again, I go to Apps, I go to Finance, and I use the TBM Solver. And this is basically where you're going to be for this chapter. It's at the TVM Solver. Now what you do is just put those numbers in. Now 30 times 1 is 30, so you put 30. Your interest rate is 8.5. Now see, it's not like the formula. In the formula, you would have to put 0.08, you know, you would put 0.085. But in this one, just put 8.5, 8.5. Your present value, which was 40,000, I'm gonna put negative, and be careful with that, you see here. Negative 40,000. Now be careful you don't put the minus, put the negative, okay? And then your payments are zero. Your future value is what you want, but first of all, we need to go to compounding. <coughs> and again, our compounding this time was still annually, so we have one and one. So I'm going to move it over to future value. Okay, I'm going to blank that out. Now, what I'm going to have, I'm going to go to my calculator right here. I'm going to press yellow, I mean not yellow, green, and I'm going to go to solve. And now I have my amount. My amount is 46. Let me go ahead and pull it back in. My amount is 46, uh, what is it? $462,330.07, uh, okay, which is what we had right here. But you can do it with a TVM solver. So any questions on this one? Now again, what the TVM solver is doing is helping you not have to remember all these formulas, okay? Because you do have several formulas that you would have to do. Like for example, if I, I didn't take this class, but I took one called uh, Principles of Accounting. And basically, uh, you have to do all this stuff. And you have to do it by hand and by tables. Okay, so on this one, we're doing the same thing. Now, the best thing to do on these is just go ahead. Now, here's the difference in this one. Look at this one right here. Let's go ahead and get our information, okay? A $2,000 deposit and an AP, okay, so it's a 2,000 deposit. So now you know that's $2,000. You have present value, you can't see that. Okay, that's your present value. Now, your interest rate is gonna be at 3%. So it's going to be 3%. Now it's going to be with daily compounding for five years. Now daily compounding in business is 365 days. Okay? So we have 365 days for five years. So you're going to multiply that by five years. And then you have, well we don't have any payments. We're not looking for payments. So we just put zero there. But now what we want to do is determine the accumulated balance. So basically, this is the number we want to find, okay? Now, until you move it around, until you're done moving it around, you're just going to have to uh, put a zero there, okay? Because if not, it just won't go anywhere. You're compounding it daily, so that's what you're going to put here, 365 and 365. <coughs> now, before I go ahead and show you that, I would like to do it on the, on the formula itself. Your accumulated amount, and this is the formula that you will use, is equal to your principal times one plus your APR divided by the number of compounding times to the N, which is the number of compounding times, times the number of years, okay? So that's basically, what, if you pl plug them in, your principal was $2,000, Okay, your, okay, so it's 1 plus your APR, but now your APR is divided by 365. 
Okay, so let's look and see. What is, if you take 0.03 and divide it by 365, you're going to get a very small number. Okay. Yeah. So you're going to get what? You're going to get, let's see, that's going to be 1, 2, 3, 4, 8, 2, 1, 9, 1, 7. Okay? So because that's five, you have five decimal places there. Okay, so you have five decimal places there. So that's basically saying... One, two, three, four, five. So you have a four, one, four, one zero, I mean uh, four zeros, and then the eight right there. In other words, one, two, three, four, five, like that. Okay, so that's basically this APR divided by N. Now that's going to be times to the power of the compounding, which the compounding was 365 times the five years. So we're going to calculate that, okay? Now I'm going to calculate this first, and then I'm going to multiply by 2,000. And as a matter of fact, in 1997, what you would have had was, they had tables which would have had these numbers, a row of tables like that. And you would have just searched for the, the one that you needed for the number of compoundings, the number of years, and you would have found that index, and you would have multiplied times whatever your balance was. But now we have these, tech, um, these machines that will do everything for you. But now here we have 1 plus 0 0.000. 0, 0. We have 1, 2, 3, 4. So we have 4, and then it's going to be 8, 2, 1, 9, 1, 7. Okay. Then we're going to raise that to the 3. Okay, so that's going to be 365 times 5. Okay, so we have that right there. So what I've calculated here is this amount right here. And then we multiply that by 2,000. To give us $2,323.65. Okay, so I have $2,323.65. Okay, but now you don't actually have to do it that way. You can just go ahead and use the TVM solver. Okay, the TVM solver, again, you go to Apps and Finance and TVM solver. Okay, remember this is N times the number of compounding times the number of years. So in this case, we had 365 times 5. So we have 365 times 5. Okay, our interest rate in this case was 3%. So we're going to put in 3. Our present value was negative 2,000. Remember, we just have to have a difference in, in signs. Our payments, we're not dealing with payments right now. Our future value, that's what we're going to try to solve for. And then we have our compounding. We're compounding daily, so that's 365. Okay? Now what you do is you move the cursor until you get to future value. And then again, after that, you're going to move right here. You're going to see that solve and it's in green. So what you're going to do is you're going to hit the green button and the solve. Whoops, sorry, I got the wrong one. So I'm going to go back over here. Okay, there we go. So I'm going to move it over here to uh, future value. Okay. And then I'm going to go green and solve. And I get my number, $2,323.65. This is where we were. $2,323. Yeah, that's what, that was a two. I messed up there. $2,323.65. Which is what you have right there. So, any questions on that? 
pretty much you could do all of this on the TVM solver. So let's try this one right here. Now, monthly, what do you think you're going to have for N? Monthly. Well, it's going to be 12 times 5. Yeah, N is equal to 12, and Y is equal to 5. That's correct. And then you have your APR. Your APR is equal to 6.2%. You have a principal of $10,000. Okay. You want to determine the accumulated balance. You want to find A. Okay, so let's see. We can go ahead and put this in there and then put it in the calculator. See, that's going to be 12 times 5. You have to put those two together. Your APR is 6.2. Present value, well, that's going to be. What was it, 10,000? Yeah, it was 10,000. Your payments, well, we don't we care about payments right now. The future value, that's what we want to do, but for right now, we're just going to leave it at zero. And we're going to compound monthly. So monthly is 12. So put those numbers into your calculator, and now see what you get. You're going to go to Apps, Finance, and TVM Solver. You're going to have 12 times 5, your interest rate is 6.2, present value is negative 10,000. Your payments you don't care about, okay, future value, that's what we're trying to solve for. We're compounding for 12 months, okay, and then you move your cursor to future value. And remember, green and enter. And what do you get for the answer? What is the answer for that one? 13,000, yes, yeah, 623 dollars and 37 cents. That's correct. Okay, so that is the answer. That's the amount. Okay, so are there any questions on this? Okay, now I'm going to give you a um, paper that I would like you to fill out and turn to me, and then we'll go on, we'll continue on what we were doing, okay? But if you could, put your name on it and try working on these, and I will answer questions as, as we go along. But I am going to collect this. This is to be collected. So. You can work together if you want to. So this one I am going to collect, and you can work together with it. Now, if you printed out the notes, basically they're the same as this, so if you want to keep it for yourself, for your own record, you can. Okay. You can just go ahead and write it down, but I am going to collect it.
continuous compounding, what you're going to do is for the n, you're going to put 365 times 24 times 60. That's basically what you do for that. Okay. So, let's look at this right here. It says here APR versus APY. Now, the APR is your annual percentage rate. Your APY is your annual percentage per year. Okay? So basically, I think they call it this way. Okay, that's not what we had. Okay, so that's what we have. Okay, now for continuous compounding, I'm going to go ahead and move over here to this. So what you want to do here is this, on this right here. You can use the formula, okay? And in the formula, what you would do is this. Let me see where we are. to find this number right here. 2,000, deposit account, APR, with 5%. Okay, here, this is what we need. Okay, so we have this type of compounding right here. Now, if you did it by the formula, what you would have to use is this formula right here. The amount is equal to your principal times, now this is a constant called the exponential constant. And it's about 2.18 and so forth. And basically, you have it right here on your calculator where you have, let me quit over there, and if you notice that you have a little E right there, second and E, so that's basically 2.71828. That's what they call the exponential constant. Okay, so this one, this formula is E to the APR, okay, times Y. So now what we want to do is, first of all, put our information here, okay, because you might want to do it just by the calculator. So what we have is this. First of all, we're going to find our n. Okay, our n is going to be 365 because okay, not not on that one. We're just going to use this right here. So we have APR. Our APR is what? Five percent. And then we're going to have it for five years. So it's going to be five years right there. And then basically. we're going to have this formula right here. So we have everything we need for that. We need our principal. Our principal is negative 2,000. Now if you're going to do it by, by formula, you don't need to put negative 2,000. You just put it in here. 2,000, 1, 2, 3, times e to the, now the APR, which is 0 0.05, times the five years. Okay, so I'm going to calculate that. Now I'm going to calculate this first because it's easier for me to do that. So I'm going to go to second and E. Okay, then I'm going to raise it to the power and I'm going to put in 0 0.05 times 5. And I'm going to press enter. Then I'm going to multiply that by 2000. And I'm going to get 2568.05. That would be my future value, right there. Okay, that's a 2,568.05 is your future value. Now, if you did it by calculator, okay, basically what we would do is this. You go to the same place. You go to the apps, finance, and the TVM solver. And what you're going to put for N is going to be this. It's going to be a little bit different. 365 uh, days a year. 24 hours in a day, whoops, sorry, I have to multiply, times 24 hours in a day, times 60 minutes in an hour, times how many years worth this for? Five years, right? Then we go to my APR. My APR was 5%, so I'm going to put 5. Okay, then I have my present, my present value. My present value was... 
$2,000. So I put in, and I have to be negative. Negative $2,000. Payments, I ignore that right now. Future value, that's what I'm going to calculate. Now again, I'm compounding continuously. And for that is 365 times 24 hours times 60 minutes. Okay, that's what we're doing. And that's what we have right there. And we press enter and we get the same thing on the other. Now I'm going to move the cursor to what is it that we're trying to solve? We're trying to solve future value, right? Okay, so we're going to solve future value. I'm going to put the cursor there and I'll leave it blank. I'm going to go green and enter and I'm going to get my answer. See, it's right there. $2,568.05. So it's two thousand five hundred sixty-eight dollars and five cents. It's basically the same thing that we calculated by the formula. So you can use a calculator or you can use a formula if you know, need to. Okay, they're both there. Now the other thing we have is the APY and the APR. Okay, so let's look at let's look at that again. But before we do that, let's look at this one right here. We want to accumulate $75,000 future value for your retirement in 35 years, okay? You have two choices. Plan A is an account with annual compounding at an, an APR of 5%. Plan B is an account with continuous compounding at an APR of 4.5%. How much of an investment does each plan require to reach your goal? So what you're going to do is solve for present value this time, okay? Now, you could do it by formula, and I think what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to let you do it by the calculator, and I'll put something online to show you how to do it by formula if you want to, okay, so that we're not taking too much time for this. So basically, if you do it by, by calculator, okay, what you're going to do is this, number one, you just have to put the numbers in there, okay? So for plan A, let's look at this. For plan A, we have our N is going to be what? You want to accumulate $75,000. So no matter what, your, fu your future value is going to be $75,000. Okay, so let me go ahead and do this on the calculator. So you guys have that, those notes, right? to refer by? Okay. Okay, so we're going to have this. Okay, so we have So our first step is this one right here. So our first step is going to be Now, how much is that going to be? For the first one right here. We have, you want to accumulate $75,000. Okay, so let's put $75,000. Again, that's going to be negative $75,000. And it's going to be on the future value this time instead of the present value. Because that's what you want out in the future. You're going to want to get $75,000 out in the future. Okay, now, your next step is, what is your APR for this one? Well, it's 5%, so you put 5%. Now, this one, annually compounded, okay? So you have 1, your N is 1, times, now how many years? For the first one, it's 35 years, just 1 times 35. Your present value, well, that's what we're trying to solve. You don't care about payments right now. And we're compounding 1 year, yearly, like that. So that's basically what you have. So I'm going to put those into the calculator. Okay? So if number one, I'm going to have to put something in there first. Number one here is going to be 1 times 35. Then for my interest rate, it's going to be 5. My present value is going to be 0. My payments are 0. My future value, that's negative 75,000. That's what I want to have in the future. Now my compounding is yearly, so now we have that. 
Now we move the cursor to our present value. And what I'm going to have is, what is it that I have to put in the bank now in order to get $75,000 35 years from now? Okay, so I go green and enter to, this, to solve. And I get that my amount is going to be $13,596.77. So my present value is going to be $13,596.77 on that one. Now let's look at the next one right here, continuous compounding with APR of 4.5%. So now in this one, for my N, now what I'm going to have is 365 days times 24 hours in a day and 60 minutes in an hour times the number of years that we had to do this, and that was still five years, okay? Then our next one is going to be my interest rate. And my interest rate in this case is 4.5%. Now I don't care about payments, so I'm not going to do payments. My future value is still negative $75,000. I still want to find out what my um, future value of $75,000 is going to be. And then, basically, my compounding is going to be 365 times 24 times 60. The other one will do the same thing. So we're going to go ahead and go over here. We're going to go to Apps again and Finance and a TVM Solver. Now my N is going to be 365 times 24 times 60 times 5. My interest rate, again, that's going to be 4.5. My present value is zero right now. It's going to be solved before and afterwards. Okay, payments, we don't care about those. My future value is $75,000. That's what I want to get at the end. We want to compound this continuously. So it's 365 times 24 times 60. Now we move the cursor to my present value. And I use green button and solve. And I get my answer. My answer is going to be that it's going to be $59,888.72. So I have to put in the bank right now $59,888.72. In the bank in order to get my seventy five thousand dollars. Yes. So in you did times five instead of thirty five? I'm sorry? For in you did times five instead of thirty five? Wasn't it thirty five years? Let me see, where did I get the five from? Yeah, I'm sorry. It should be thirty five. <coughs> yeah, was it thirty five? Okay. So basically well, let me repeat it, 365 times um, 365 times 24 times 60 times now 35. Okay. So everything is going to be the same. Let's zero this out. Okay, so second and solve. Yeah, it should be really, what should it be there? That's correct. Yeah. Should be fifteen thousand five hundred and twenty five and fifty seven cents. Okay, so any questions on that? Now, there's two ways of finding the APR, and, I mean the APY, there's just the APR right here. There are two ways of doing it, okay? One way is just using, by, by what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you just to do it, how to, how to do it on the calculator, okay? So to do it on the calculator, what you're going to do, let me go ahead and show it on here, let me see if it's here. Okay, just do this. Go to um, your calculator. Go to apps, select one, finance, 
scroll down until you see EFF. Now the correct syntax is basically the percent rate, your APR, and then your compounding per year. So like for example, if it's quarterly, it would be 4. If it was monthly, it would be 12. So let's look at this one. Let's say that we had an APR of 8% compounded quarterly, monthly and daily. I'm going to use the other calculator right now because that way I don't have to keep on uh, going from one to the other. Okay, so now basically what we would do is this. Now, my right here, what you would have to do is you would go to your calculator Okay, let's go ahead and second quit. You're going to go over here to, no, it's going to be a different place than this one, but it's basically the same thing. You're going to scroll down until you see EFF. See there, EFF. Press enter. Now you're going to have, so what you're going to put in for this one, you have 8%. Okay, and it's compounded quarterly. Okay, this one is eight. So you're gonna type in eight. Then comma, quarterly would be what? Four, and press enter. So your amount should be 8.24. Questions on that one? Okay, so the next thing you have, so basically that's what you have on that one. Let's look at the monthly. Okay, so if you have monthly, go ahead and try monthly on your own. See what you get on monthly on your own. Again, you're going to go to finance, TVM, so finance, I'm sorry, you're going to go to EFF, and then go ahead and go to find the interest rate for 8 comma, and then 12. <laughs> Okay, so do you get 8.3%? Notice how we do this. The way you have it is this way. I go, again, go second in finance, or if you have the other calculator, apps and then finance. Go down to EFF. Okay. Then put in your number, 8 comma, compound it monthly, so it's 12, and then press enter. And you get 8.29999, which will round off to 8.30. Now what about the next one? We want to find daily. So if quarterly is 4 and monthly is 12, what is daily? 365. So try that. So try it with 
So what do you get? Did you get 8.33? Okay. So that's how you get the APY. Okay. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and do that lecture tutorial, the last part of the handout that I gave you. Go ahead and work on those and see if you can do them there. Now answer any questions that you have.